Hi everyone, I'm Jose and I'm in Allentown, Pennsylvania, the queen city of the Lehigh Valley. The Lehigh Valley is the third largest region in the state, becoming one of the key areas when America ushered in the Industrial Revolution. The Lehigh Valley is home to the iconic Allentown, Bethlehem and Easton, making it one of the fastest growing regions in the state. On this tour, we'll experience the vibrant downtown and rich history of the city of Allentown. From the beautiful murals to the multicultural landscape, Allentown has become a pillar to the success and growth of the state. We'll explore the city's cultural and industrial history, linking remnants of the past, while learning about the original people who inhabited the area. We'll also visit the outdoors and some of Lehigh Valley's most splendid attractions. Attractions that bring joy to both children and adults, luring visitors from beyond the borders of the Keystone State. So let's go on tour to the city of Allentown in the Lehigh Valley. Our path to Allentown begins in the suburb of Schnecksville, where the area zoo has claimed 29 acres of the Trexler Nature Preserve. Allentown and the whole Lehigh Valley have so many great attractions to spend time with family. One of my favorite attractions is the Lehigh Valley Zoo, a staple of the area since 1906. This is the Lehigh Valley Zoo, and our starting point is the barn, which contains North American goats. These hungry critters aren't shy about approaching visitors, making for great interactions with the many children who are allowed to pet and feed the animals. Goats are known to be some of the most sociable animals found in the wild, with a curious and inquisitive nature that drives their desire for exploration and investigating the unknown. The zoo was founded in 1906 by General Harry Trexler, one of the most famous sons of the Lehigh Valley, and known as the father of the Pennsylvania National Guard. Trexler, originally born in eastern Pennsylvania, was one of the early believers in the importance of preserving nature. When in human care, these animals can live well beyond 20 years versus living in the wild, where they suffer from low birth rates due to spending a portion of their life underwater and fending off larger predators. From North America, we make our way to the continent of Africa, where we find endangered penguins. These beautiful, flightless birds love to gather in large colonies. Africa is home to some of the most amazing animals on Earth, including the zebra, the striped, horse-like mammal, who loves to roam grasslands, savannas, and woodlands, where they spend most of their day eating grass, leaves, and twigs. we explore the grounds of the zoo, we find ourselves in the land down under with kangaroos and other animals from Australia. They attract the most visitors due to their unique features. Kangaroos can jump up to 30 feet, stand at 6 feet tall, and deliver a punch that's 8 times as powerful as that of a human. But one of my favorite animals in the exhibit is the emu, the second largest bird on earth. Emus are well known for their land speed. What fascinating noises come out of the emu? It sounds like blowing into a jar. And speaking of large birds, back in the African exhibits, we come across an ostrich, the largest of living birds. To close out our journey, we visit the Musai giraffes, the giants of Africa that can grow up to 19 feet tall and weigh more than a ton. They're just one of the many unique animals that call the zoo home.
From high above the Lehigh Valley, I welcome you to Center City Allentown, where the PPL building becomes the heart of the city's skyline. Allentown, Pennsylvania, a city founded in 1762 by William Allen, a former mayor of Philadelphia. Allen envisioned turning Allentown into the central commercial hub of the Lehigh Valley because of its proximity to Philadelphia and New York City. The city's name was changed to Allentown after Allen's passing in 1832. By this period, Allentown had transformed into one of America's largest industrial territories as the market for steel and iron began to see prosperous growth, servicing Pennsylvania's coal mines and railroads. The Lehigh Valley was one of the earliest regions in the country to develop a canal. It helped transport anthracite coal from the regions of Wilkesbury, Hazleton, and Scranton down to Philadelphia and the rest of the country, powering America's industrial development. After the collapse of the iron industry and closure to pioneer companies like Bethlehem Steel, the city quickly pivoted to become a service-based area and one of the country's top employers in the field of education and healthcare. On this early summer morning, the Allentown residents bring fitness to the confines of West Park, the first public park established in the city by its most influential businessman, Harry Trexler. Trexler wanted to create a place of escape amidst the burgeoning industrialization of the Lehigh Valley. Trexler was influenced by the City Beautiful movement, which gave birth to many of America's most famous parks. Modeling the landscape after an idyllic English garden, the park went on to become one of the treasures of Allentown. From boxers practicing at the fountain to joggers sprinting past the band shell, the park has always been a favorite retreat for Allentown residents, containing more than 300 types of shrubs and 78 varieties of trees it provides a calm escape from the surrounding downtown environment while feeling like we're wandering through an arboretum. When you enter the city's downtown, you can feel the transformation from an industrial past to one of America's fastest growing communities for professionals. The state has heavily invested in the revitalization of this former manufacturing hub to become a model for urban development. Allentown, Pennsylvania, the county seat and largest city in the Lehigh Valley, founded in 1762 by James Allen. In the mid-1800s, it became a key player in the iron, cement, and mill industries, forming an industrial complex along with Bethlehem and Easton. In its downtown, residents gather at the PPL Center, the sports arena, that's home to the Lehigh Valley Phantoms hockey team. Allentown quickly adapted to the changing landscape and experienced a renaissance of hip and vibrant industries, transforming the image of the Rust Belt City. The transformation is showcased on this beautiful mural, which depicts Allentown as a queen. The city has become one of Pennsylvania's most popular communities for artists with festivals, art studios, and galleries popping up all over the area. The art graces the storefronts of modern restaurants, helping revitalize the businesses of Center City with a spectrum of colors that gives life to these urban alleys, turning the Allentown Art Walk into one of the most appealing segments of the valley. During its industrial peak, Allentown was one of the most famous cities in America, attracting a diverse population of workers and businesses to the area, which became vital to Pennsylvania's economic growth. The city was a major transportation center for coal, iron ore, and steel production. Modern Allentown has become a cultural hub for Northeast Pennsylvania, 
where cuisines from Middle Eastern to Pennsylvania Dutch and cultures from all over the world have marked their place in the story of the city. Allentown's role in American history extends beyond the industrial era. During the Revolutionary War, the city became the keeper of the Liberty Bell. When the British took over Philadelphia, the bell was transported to the Zion United Church of Christ, which is located in modern Center City. Allentown was an unknown area to the British, making the city an ideal location to protect this crucial symbol of American independence. Saving this historical monument boosted the morale of the colonists during the war, and this sentiment parallels the excitement felt when Harry Trexler debuted West Park, where the crowds gathered to experience a new path forward for America. Cuisine is such a large part of Allentown's culture, and with the rise of food trucks, there's more options than ever for visitors to explore. Allentown is close to major metropolitan areas like New York City and Philadelphia, where its residents have brought their traditions from the old country and influences from the major cities to combine with the historic culture of Pennsylvania, developing explosive flavors and unique dishes that will surprise the taste buds of the most seasoned food critic. Following the crowd, I order from World League Q's food truck by the team of Grumpy Barbecue's Roadhouse. An amazing combination of Tex-Mex, Southern and Cajun cooking styles that creates delicious seasoning to my big Tex beef brisket sandwich, which tastes simply amazing. In this record-breaking summer heat, we travel to the rivers and creeks that surround the city. The Lehigh River is a principal body of water that flows through the valley creating a 109-mile stream from its headwaters in the Pocono Plateau to its confluence at the Delaware River in Easton. And from that giant stream comes 14 major tributaries, including its largest, the Little Lehigh Creek, where Allentown residents take to the cool waters of the stream, fighting off the blistering temperatures that exceed 90 degrees Fahrenheit. The Little Lehigh Creek is approximately 24 miles long and runs alongside several of the city's parks and biking trails, creating a fantastic recreational escape that blends with the ambient sounds of the rushing waters and the joyful laughter coming from the many visitors. During the Industrial Revolution, the Little Lehigh Creek powered the many mills along the banks of the tributary and became the natural resource for cooling the metals from the iron works. As the industrial age faded, the creek's water quality was restored and conservationists revived its natural habitats, bringing back one of the creek's most popular pastimes, trout fishing. Allentown and the whole Lehigh Valley is an area of diversity tracing its roots to the Lenape Native Americans, then becoming part to the Pennsylvania's Dutch cultural territory. The area turned into a haven for my fellow residents of Latin American descent. At the Lehigh Valley Hispanic Center, we're greeted with the many colorful flags of Latin American nations, from Brazil and the Dominican Republic to the European nations of Spain and Portugal, who influenced much of Latin America. All are represented on this mural, 
led by one of Pennsylvania's most honorable baseball players, Roberto Clemente, the Puerto Rican icon who became one of the greatest players to the Pittsburgh Pirates. The history of Latinos in the Lehigh Valley dates back to the early 1900s when recruiters from the area's industrial businesses searched for new labor. From as early as the 1920s, close to 1,000 Mexicans came by rail, and through the 1960s, Mexicans, Spaniards, and Puerto Ricans marked their place in the history of the steel industry. Beginning with companies like Bethlehem Steel and other smaller firms, production of steel ramped up significantly to support war efforts. Due to labor shortages caused by the deployment of American workers during both world wars, these companies needed to rely on foreign labor to produce weapons. During a tour of Bethlehem Steel, the rest of the remains of this pioneer tell a long and storied history of its influential contributions to the efforts of the Great Wars and helping America to victory. The weekends become the time for gatherings of friends and family as sports takes hold of the many parks within the city. At Fountain Park, the exciting sounds of a soccer game can be heard from miles away, where these local athletes bring the adrenaline of the major leagues. And each move is a fast-paced display of pure sportsmanship, where the frenzied blitz makes it challenging to keep up with your speed. An audience gathers along the sidelines of the park, cheering on the favorite local teams. Spectators look on with intense concentration at this fast-paced game. Allentown has seen tremendous growth for the sport of soccer, a passion brought by the many Latino residents that have moved to the city. Soccer is the most played sport in Latin America, and in this intense game, even the referees are moving a mile a minute, trying to keep up with the lightning speed of the players. remain stunned at the fluid plays being performed on the field, and a team player lets loose his frustration on his teammates. As we return to the trails of the Little Lehigh Creek, we stumble upon a beautiful teepee displayed by the Museum of Indian Culture. The museum has become the oldest Native American Heritage Museum in Pennsylvania, first opening in 1980. The Lenape Native Americans were the original settlers of the Lehigh Valley. This museum has been honoring that history for the last 40 years. Behind the museum is the Lenape Trail that runs adjacent to the Little Lehigh Creek. The Lenape called it the Olay Path, meaning a place surrounded by hills. Back at West Park, I conversate with the locals as the hour of fitness winds down and we tour the monuments in the park dedicated to the soldiers of Allentown. With a giant statue to honor Allentown's first defenders, the Allen Infantry, where Ignitz Gresser takes center stage, the only Allentown resident to be awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor for his heroism at the Battle of Antietam in Maryland. The Allen Unit, along with four other Pennsylvania militias, were the first to defend Washington, D.C. against attacks from Confederate armies. 
Not too far from the Museum of the Native American Culture is the Little Lehigh Trout Nursery. This nursery is one of the oldest in the country. The Little Lehigh Trout Nursery, what the Morning Call newspaper names the jewel to the crown of the Queen City. The nursery has origins dating back as old as the late 1800s, and visitors walk through the colorful entryway to discover the many trout fishes moving about in their nursery. The Little Lehigh Nursery is a fish hatchery that was developed by the Allentown Park Department during the era of expanding Allentown's public spaces. And a gray heron patiently sits atop the fence, looking for a way to snatch a trout fish. As I walk around the nursery, I join other visitors in spending a peaceful afternoon in this Allentown attraction that invites calm and meditative tranquility. The Little Lehigh Nursery contains 15 large tanks, which houses thousands of fish, installed in a below-the-ground setting, leaving enough space for visitors to feed the many variety of trouts, with nets to protect from birds eating the fish. Along the banks of the Little Lehigh Creek is a bogart-covered bridge, one of the oldest in the nation, dating back to the 1800s and spanning 145 feet over the creek. The Burr Trust Design Bridge has become the most famous covered bridge in the area and another treasure to the Lehigh Valley. Across Pennsylvania, we always find ruins of the past. The Keystone State was one of the major players to the development of America. The towns and cities all provided an input to the advancement of the country. In this suburb of Allentown is Lock Ridge Park, what remains of the Iron Works. Touring the large cities of the Lehigh Valley and their suburbs feels like walking through a museum and seeing the era of prosperous growth in America. Steel dramatically flowing from the open hearth furnace for processing into many forms and products today is an indispensable material. Steel has the needed strength and adaptability, and the steel industry has developed through research The Lockridge Furnace, a forgotten relic of the Lehigh Valley's past. Like many other abandoned attractions in the area, it leaves behind the haunting remains of a once thriving industry. The furnace operated from 1868 through 1921, playing an important role to the early iron industry of the region. With a 59 acre footprint, this iron furnace was the last in America to use anthracite coal as fuel, propelling the Lehigh Valley to become the largest producer of pig iron in the state. Walking among these remains, you can feel the heavy winds carrying the echoes of a time when laborers worked tirelessly to bring America to the industrial forefront. Created by the Lock Ridge Iron Company, the furnace resembles a medieval fortification with stone walls and a crenellated exterior, an architectural blend of industrial function and Gothic revival. This once abandoned giant has been transformed into a museum operated by the Lehigh County Historical Society. shops of the Bethlehem Steel Company in Steelton, Pennsylvania, the fabrication work begins. Bethlehem, the major contractor, will build the steel towers and suspended span of the bridge. The Lehigh Valley 
with its cities of Allentown, Bethlehem, and Easton, became integral to the transformation, giving us American icons like the Golden Gate Bridge and laying the foundation for expansion in the country, from an agrarian society to one of an industrial power. At the heart of that innovation stands the beacon of prosperity in the center of the Lehigh Valley's largest city, Allentown, Pennsylvania. The city of Allentown is one of the most vibrant and diverse places in Pennsylvania. With its strong industrial heritage, fascinating history, and revolutionary development to its downtown, the city could be a model for other Pennsylvania cities bridging the gap between industrial past and urban revitalization. It maintains the story of its glory days while celebrating the growing population that has driven a strong economy to creative new industries, truly the queen of the Lehigh Valley. I'm Jose, and I thank you for joining me on this tour of Allentown, Pennsylvania. Until next time.